Last episode, Victor Boniface started to cement himself as a £60 million bargain, scoring goal after goal after goal. But whilst it still wasn't enough to rescue our shaky form in the Premier League, we finally sought redemption in the Champions League. And that is where we're going to start today, because it's all about the football in today's episode, as we're kicking off with an almighty clash against Dortmund in the Champions League. Unfortunately, though, there is fatigue absolutely ripping through my squad, particularly in defensive areas, and that's why I've had to make several enforced changes. Marbadash really starts in goal, Bradley, Kwanzaa, Marie Morello and Robertson will start at the back. As you can see, Zabotsky's partnered by Curtis Jones in the centre. Salah, Jota and Diaz start behind Darwin Nunez up front. Well, after getting a huge victory in our opening Champions League game, we're going to hopefully see if we can try and double our tally here back at Anfield for the first time this season in European competition. And it's Luis Diaz now who tries to release Andy Robertson down this left-hand side. He's done a really good job of doing so. He tries to dink it into Darwin Nunez. It was well blocked off though. Dortmund playing out from the back and playing out from the back absolutely wonderfully. They've completely beaten the press there but they can't get past the former Nottingham Forest man Murillo who eventually ends up losing the challenge to Garassi who picks it up tries to go past Kwanzaa it's now out to Rice and back to Garassi this is some really nice play from Dortmund here once again Murillo comes across to just cover off that space good start so far for the former Forest man it's out to Gross I think that's the former Brighton man on the edge of the box he can't put his shot away though and now we will escape with the ball on the counter attack it's Luis Diaz waiting for someone to try and make a run into the box what is Darwin Nunez doing and in the end it's easily cut out from Saliba. Diaz out to Jota. First time ball into Darwin Nunez who stayed on side. Darwin Nunez into the box. Darwin Nunez into the back of the net. Well it's been a lightning start so far in the opening 20 minutes for Liverpool and finally we've taken advantage. Darwin Nunez has been ostracised since the arrival of Victor Boniface. He's not really had his opportunity but finally with just 20 minutes on the clock he's taken his opportunity with absolute aplomb. 1-0 Liverpool against Borussia Dortmund. Kittens for Dortmund out to Julian Brandt on this left hand side. Good interception though from Kwanzaa. He was in the right place at the right time and read that one really well. Now Jota out to Diaz. This is lovely, incisive counter-attacking play here from Liverpool. Straight into Darwin Nunez who just drags it wide. Oh, Garassi now has it for Dortmund here. He doesn't have too much support though, so he's having to wait for runs into the box. And he's found a wonderful run into the box. But Murillo once again in the right place at the right time. That man has had a brilliant start so far in this opening 37 minutes. Julian Brandt. Back to Saeed. Kwanzaa with a challenge. Back into Bynard Gittens right on the edge of the box here. Once again, this time it's Curtis Jones with a challenge. Out to the edge of the box goes Daniel Martin. It's blocked off though once again. Dominic Zabotsky brings it clear. Jota now out to Diaz. And once again, we've got the chance to counter-attack here. Diaz plays it into that man. Darwin Nunez onto the edge of the box. Oh my goodness, what a strike. What a flying save. And even though Dortmund are starting to press forward here in the back end of the second half, I still feel like we're the more likely to score every single time we get we look dangerous as it's thrown into the box for Kwanzaa. It's just headed away. Oh my goodness, the goalkeeper just about manages to get onto it. It's out to Murillo. The centre-back lines it up with his left. And he forces the keeper just to tip it over the bar. I thought Murillo was about to add it to his absolutely monstrous display in the first half with an even better finish. But unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be as we start the second half with only one goal to show for it so far. Down the line into Gurassi. Good start here so far in the second half. For Borussia Dortmund, the striker holds the ball up and tries to go past Murillo, but he holds firm here and he has to go back to Marlon on the right hand side. Nice little skip away from Robertson, but once again, Murillo in the right place at the right time. Fabulous defending. Marlon plays it up the channel into Gurassi. It looks like Kwanzaa may have picked up a slight knock here, but uh, we're going to try and see if we can hit them on the counter attack in spite of that knock. Luis Diaz looking to play it through the channel into Darwin Nunez. Has the big man stayed on side? Yes, he has, but what options has he got? None enough in the box, so he plays it back into the feet of Diogo Jota. A space to line up the shot. What a strike off the bar. The keeper was beaten, but unfortunately, the woodwork wasn't. Connor Bradley. Mo Salah, one touch into Jota. Jota tries to feed it into Darwin. Nunez can't reach him. Marlon now for Dortmund into Garassi. This game starting now really to get stretched. But in spite of him picking up a knock, Kwanzaa remains firm at the back and then is absolutely hacked down. And it looks like he's gone down with an even further injury. He's aggravated it even more. And that's not what I want to see. I have decided to make several substitutions. I don't really want to take any risks. And one of those substitutions is this man Bard. The left back playing at right back plays it into another man who normally plays on the left. 
lifted Anthony Gordon. He's going to try and dink it across. So looking for Darwin Nunez on the volley. What a flying diving header it was. But now it's Daniel Martin though who's managed to just skip away from Murillo. The centre back frantically trying to come back to track. What a flying stop it was from the goalkeeper. But he couldn't do anything on the second attempt. And from absolutely nowhere, Borussia Dortmund have levelled it up here at Anfield. Well, I tell you what, with all these substitutions, we've fallen asleep a little bit. We haven't really taken advantage of our chances here in the second half. And we've been made to pay by the Dortmund front line from absolutely nowhere. They've stolen a goal from nothing. And they've levelled up the scores. Well, I've got to be honest, I felt comfortable. I felt in complete control of this game. I wasn't really feeling particularly threatened. And my word, perhaps that confidence has seeped over into the players. Because from absolutely nowhere. Where now we've got it all to do to try and grab a victory here in this game. And with Dortmund getting that late goal, it seems like the momentum has now suddenly shifted onto their side because they're now all over me here, deep into the final 10 minutes of the game. It's Pascal Gross playing it back. This is some good football. Lovely bit of domination here from Borussia Dortmund. Gross back into Marlon. Marlon back into Gross. Really nice play here. And now they're trying to see if they can work their way into the box. Murillo, though, is trying it. He's trying in his attempt to get the ball back. Ended up four falling over himself and falling over the opposition attackers but just about manages to get it away and frustratingly with the momentum ripped away from us we weren't able to carve out any more opportunities in the final 10 minutes as we go from absolutely dominating the first half look at the more likely to score across the entire 90 minutes just throwing away a huge three points and we can only take one finishes here one all well everyone knows we had our troubles in the Champions League last season and after picking up our first victory of the campaign in this very competition I thought we were over them but it seems like perhaps that lack of confidence has seeped over once again into season two as frustratingly we dropped down to 14th spot speaking of dropping down though after dropping down now to 11th place in the Premier League picking up just two wins in our opening six games we are back in action in that very competition once again but it's not going to get any easier because we even though we're heading back to Anfield we're going to be facing off against a resurgent Chelsea team who come here in full confidence of three points of course it is a return back to my usual strongest starting 11 with one very obvious exception with Mo Salah not really kick-starting his season so far he takes his place on the bench to be replaced by Anthony Gordon on the right hand side a big game calls for a big performance and hopefully a better performance than the one we saw against Borussia Dortmund yes we were good in patches but we didn't take our opportunities and at the highest level in the Premier League that will certainly come back to bite us once again but once again we're going to try and see if we can start off pretty decently here as Luis Diaz plays a wonderful ball over to Boniface who takes it on with his second touch and he forces the goalkeeper into a big save in the opening five minutes and Cape tries to throw it to the former Liverpool man Endo nods it back down into the path of Raheem Sterling another former Liverpool man but it only goes out for a throw that Christopher Nkunku picks up in a lovely little pocket of space and plays it back into that man Raheem Sterling and he does have space down this left hand side to run into here but Canate the big Frenchman comes across and does a wonderful job of challenging him Anthony Gordon once again into Victor Boniface playing that role of hold up man it's not a good enough role though McAllister into Jota, Jota into Wharton, Wharton into Diaz, Diaz into Boniface. Good play here, good passage of play from Liverpool. And Boniface has skipped away from one, skipped away from two. Into the box he goes, he's got the power to hold off the defenders. And he just can't slide it into the back of the net. What an outstanding goal that would have been. Well, Victor Boniface had a second opportunity for a second contender for goal of the season with that one. And he was so unlucky not to try and find the back of the net. But he's going to hope to try and see if he can find a ball into Anthony Gordon. And this time it is a wonderful ball into the Englishman who drives into the box and he's hit the other side of the post. How many chances does one team? need. I spoke at the beginning of the game that we've got to do a better job of taking our opportunities. We haven't so far. We've totally carved Chelsea open. Is this going to come back to bite us here? As they play a ball through into Nicholas Jackson to Moore. He tries to come across. He's muscled off of it though by the big man up front and he forces Allison into a save and he just palmed it back into his path and perhaps Jackson could have done better. The Chelsea fans have their heads in their hands. They can't quite believe it. Allison made a right meal of that one. All he needed to do was nod it in. He took a chest down and it went into the side netting. What a total palaver. Lavia into Cole Palmer. Once again now, Chelsea are really starting to come out of the blocks here. This is some lovely play from the Englishman. Second half begins and it begins with a nil-nil scoreline. And once again, that doesn't really reflect the passage of play so far. We've absolutely battered Chelsea in front of goal. We've hit the woodwork twice. And somehow we're scratching our heads as to how we are not at least 1-0 up here. It's Diogo Jota though who's picked it up in a nice little pocket of space. Gordon round the corner into Trent. 
This is a good opportunity for Trent to dink it over into the path that Boniface took his header on. But in the end, it just dragged wide. Chelsea have got a throw, though, inside my half. And it's taken into the feet of Cole Palmer, who's taken it down really nicely. Christopher Nkunku, he's looking for that run. He's found the run of Raheem Sterling, the former Liverpool man, just puts it wide. Trent Alexander-Arnold, lovely pass into Victor Boniface. The big man holding up the line really well. Tries to play it through into Anthony Gordon. Couldn't quite feed it into him, though. Chelsea holding firm here at the beginning of the second half. And they've had a little bit more control than we have. We've got to try and see if we can wrestle that back from them here. As Andrew Robertson is trying to wrestle the ball back from Nicholas Jackson. But he can't quite do it. Chelsea keep the ball alive here. And Cape, the centre-back, is up. McAllister trying to challenge. McAllister with a double challenge. Really good defending from the Argentinian. Trent now brings it forward. Looking for Anthony Gordon. Finds Anthony Gordon. His touch is off. And his performances so far in a Liverpool shirt have been completely off. I mean, Olavia. Cole Palmer, Nicholas Jackson skips away from Canate. Trent tries to come across, forces Allison into a save. 20 minutes on the clock. I'm calling the cavalry. On comes the star man, Mo Salah. Cape picks up the loose ball from the corner, though. Back out to Christopher and Kunku's got time to try and pick his man into the box, and he does just that. How did Nicholas Jackson miss that from such close range? Trent into McAllister. McAllister back into Trent once again. Looks for the ball into Mo Salah. Finds Mo Salah. Mo Salah looking for the ball into Victor Boniface. Finds the ball into Boniface. He's just blocked off by Chalalaba. He's been kept quiet so far in the second half by the Chelsea defenders. And Kunku into Nicholas Jackson. Trying the step overs. Looks for the step over into Cole Palmer. Who's managed to find a way past Canate. It was a tame shot in the end though. Straight into the path of Allison To Botslai. Into Cody Gakbo. Gakbo. Feeds it back into the centre, into Diogo Jota, who plays it across into the danger man, Mo Salah. Salah looking for a ball. I was actually looking for the ball into Bodyface, but it looks like it's a good one into Cody Gakbo. He just couldn't reach it. And unfortunately for both teams, that turned out to be the last attack of the game in what was a fairly tame end in the last 20 minutes. I think the substitutions, instead of invigorating us, just cut a little bit of momentum out of the game. And in the end, it ends up here a square draw. Nil-nil. We follow it up, though, with a hard-fought victory away from home against Wolves 1-0 and get back to winning ways in the Champions League, winning 2-0 at Anfield. But unfortunately, those two victories have come at a severe cost because for Kaio Tomori, our star centre-back, has picked up a torn calf muscle that's going to keep him out for the next two months. It is, however, a big opportunity for the likes of Murillo and perhaps even Yorel Kwanza to try and step up in his absence. And it seems like Murillo has done just that, helping us along to a 2-1 victory back in the Premier League. We just about scraped through on penalties 2-0 in the Carabao Cup against Gillingham before our positive momentum comes to a crashing halt, losing 2 2-1 away from home against Norwich. And it's back-to-back -back defeats, this time in the Champions League, as we lose 1-0 away from home again to Young Boys. But after finally getting back in the win column with a 2-0 victory at Anfield against Sheffield United, and after smashing Burnley 5-1 away from home, we win again 2-1 in the Champions League against Lazio. But can only manage a draw back in the Premier League, one all to Bournemouth. But after coming off a 3-2 loss in our final sim game of the episode, after coming off that mountain of fixtures, we can only still find ourselves in seventh place in the Premier League with 14 games played so far. So here's to hoping that our final played game of the episode against our arch rivals Everton can try and bring back some much needed momentum into this Liverpool season. If we're going to get the three points then we're going to have to do it without Victor Boniface who running on fumes will find himself on the bench. As you can see a couple of other changes to my usual starting 11. Kwans is in at the back still with Fakayo Tomori out injured and also you can see Cody Gakbo's taking his place on the left hand side in place of Luis Diaz as is the bots lie in the centre of the park. So it's Darwin Nunez to kick us off here it's into McAllister out to Trent on the right hand side who's come central and the Englishman feeds it back into Jota into Gakpo. He's another one who's come central here. And Gakpo skipping away from one challenge, skipping away from two challenges. In the box he goes, takes it on, smashes it against Branthwaite for our first corner of the game. Of course, it's going to be that man, Trent, who's going to be the man to take the corner here. Flings it in, looking for Kwanzaa. It's a good ball in, headed clear though by Decore. As you can see so far, 20 minutes on the clock. It's been a fairly lacklustre affair here so far in Merseyside. But can one of these two teams, can the blue half of Merseyside, try and see if they can ignite the fire in this game here as they play it into the box here. Mateta right on the edge, loses out though. McAllister brings it clear and he feeds in Jota. Jota looking for the ball into Darwin. Nunez can the young man bring it on? He can. Into the box he goes and he forces the goalkeeper into his first save of the game. Dominic Sabotsley heads it down into Jota. 
Now, is this hopefully going to try and ignite this game into some sort of energy and some sort of excitement as Mo Salah tries to take the shot off? In the end, it gets rebounded back. White McNeil feeds a wonderful ball out to Decore on the left-hand side. And that is a perfect touch from the young man. Absolutely sensational. But Kwanzaa intercepts well. Liverpool to bring it forward. McAllister is the game starting to get stretched here. Zabotzlai into Gakpo. Gakpo round the corner into Darwin Nunez. He's waiting for the run back off. Cody Gakpo tries to take the volley on. In the end, it's blocked off. Decore. This game certainly is getting stretched because Luna now plays it into Mateta, the former Crystal Palace man now. He's up alone, though. Doesn't have any options. He's being absolutely harassed by Canate, but the Frenchman can't win the ball back. Eventually, Robertson does. Clears his lines out to Mo Salah. Salah now feeds it into Darwin Nunez up front. Once again, he's the big man who's up front on his own here, looking to try and wait for the run of Cody Gagbo, but the Dutchman can't get there. But the Dutchman does win the ball back in a really good position. Cuts it back into Darwin Nunez, who drags it wide. As I'm sure you know, I'm finding it so much more difficult in FC 25 to break teams down defensively. They're just so much better, but as I go and say that, they go and give the ball away in a really dangerous position here. Darwin Nunez doesn't have the pace, though, to get away from the challenge of the defenders. He can't feed it into Mo Salah, though. And once again, we can't unlock defences, even when it's handed to us on a plate. And it's almost handed on a plate to Everton here. End-to-end -end stuff here with 64 minutes on the clock. Decore tries to go past Canate. Luna picks it up. Lovely ball back into Decore. Right into the box. Luna picks it up. Forces Allison into a save, headed clear by Kwanzaa. And of course, in desperate times, the cavalry is called. And that means there's only one man to save us. And his name is Victor Boniface. But before he can do so, we've got to defend a corner here. And it's one that they're going to take short. Luna right on the edge of the box. Feet it back into Dwight McNeil. Dwight McNeil weaving, turning, trying to see if he can get away from the new man. Chiesa on as a sub. Canate hits it clear. Only out as far as Odrisa Garnage on the edge. Decore now into my box. It's blocked off though. Good defending in the end. And we just about managed to clear our lines. Gordon looks to play it across to Chiesa. Chiesa looking for the ball central into Diogo Jota who's taking it on once again defensively. Everton too good. Corey tussling with Trent and he's got the better of him. It's Mateta into the box. Allison with a flying save to keep us at bay. But Everton now still continue forward with Dwight McNeil straight down the pipe into the Brazilian's arms. Ponza ball forward into Anthony Gordon now. Victor Boniface with his first real touch in this game. Plays a lovely ball into the channel. Anthony Gordon for his first chance here for Liverpool. And he takes it with a plum against his former team. The team that he came through the ranks at. Anthony Gordon has absolutely shown no fear here against them. And he's done the unthinkable by getting us into the lead here. It was played through by the substitute Boniface. And Anthony Gordon finally getting a goal in a Liverpool shirt. And my word, just how important could that goal be? Jared Branthwaite loses it to McCarthy and have their heads dropped here. Is this the chance to see this game out? Alexis McAllister, for goodness sake. Caught in two minds. He never looked comfortable. I was hoping that Victor Boniface would be able to get up to join him, but he couldn't. And in the end, he had to take it on himself. Boniface tries to get his head on it, though. Jota, can Trent get there first? No, he can't. A huge opportunity for us to double our lead that we don't take, but it does not matter one bit because I salute the Anfield crowd, the Everton players, crestfallen because they've absolutely given it away in the final couple of minutes of the game. Anthony Gordon celebrates wildly and rightly so. Finally, we get a victory back on track here in the Premier League. It finishes 1-0 Liverpool. And with us up to 8th place in the Champions League table. And with us back up to 6th place now in the Premier League. Just 9 points behind Manchester City top. It feels like that's the perfect way to end what has been a roller coaster of a footballing episode. Thanks everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you again next time.